We're going to go ahead and begin our evening tonight. Uh, for our introductory thoughts, I already shared a little bit, but um, considering being fruitful and multiplying, Amen. and of course, in the kingdom, being fruitful there, but the Lord has given us shadows and types and pictures in the earth, and I already shared with you this morning, I was seeding a uh, zucchini for preparation in the kitchen and cut this one piece of fruit open, and the multitude of seeds in there just started my thinking about the potential of production in this one fruit. So I wanted to consider this, and it goes all the way back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1 is where the Lord gave this command. In verses 22 and in 28, he tells the fowls of the air and the fish of the sea and mankind, be fruitful and multiply. It is a command. God gave this as a command. So where did this begin? Where did the, this process of bringing forth fruit begin in this garden in uh, verse 11 God said let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself after his kind so this is where it begins is the seed this is the smallest part or smallest unit in the scheme of sowing and harvesting and reaping is the seed and this is where it all begins in Matthew 13, verses 31 and 32, speaks of this mustard seed. What did it say about this seed? It says, which is the least of all seeds, tiny, begins small, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Amen. So something that has a very small beginning does not stay small. Yeah. The potential is there for something very large and great to come forth from that. Amen. And the seed, everything that's needed for the plant, this huge plant is found in that seed in the very, very beginning. It's of, of its own nature, the fruit. So there's one seed planted brings forth one plant. But on that plant, there are numerous fruits from one seed. Then when you cut the fruit open you'll see numerous seeds, which again have the potential of bringing forth an abundance. So we see this cycle not only continues, but it increases as it goes along. Amen. So when the Lord said, be fruitful, there was already the idea of abundance. There is an abundance to be had if, if there is fruit to be born. But in addition, he said, and multiply. Not only be fruitful, but multiply. Here is the implication of limitless possibilities, the multiplication. Now, I consider the Word of God is referred to as a seed that begins small, but it's planted, and the Word of God can grow and multiply. It's referred to in scriptures, but also our faith. I saw this as our faith can begin as a seed because we are said to grow in faith, well, if you're growing in something, it began as a unit with the potential for growth and increase. So our faith can be likened to a seed. When we receive it, it begins to grow. And it actually will become so large, that's the victory that overcomes the world. <clears throat> now, when the Lord said, be fruitful, it was a command. But you have to look behind the command when he spoke it and see every provision that he made for that command to be brought forth. He had already created, back in the garden, whenever he told man to be fruitful and multiply, he'd already created an environment that was conducive for this. The Garden of Eden. It had light. It had rivers. It had God's presence himself. He was there. So everything needed was in this environment for fruit. And then the Lord said, now you be fruitful and you multiply here. So... Remember, this, everything in this creation was very good. So this is what the Lord is doing. So if we remain in an environment that the Lord has cultured to be such a good environment, we will bring forth fruit. We will if we continue. And this, we know that this environment for us is Christ. Now, uh, also, remember back to the parable that Jesus told about the unfruitful tree when the master went out to inspect his vineyard and he saw this tree, he said, why cumbereth it the ground? It wasn't bringing forth fruit. Now, at that point, the master was going to demand fruit from this tree. But when the demand was given, 
the resources were going to be given also. That was the time when the servant said, let me dig about it and dung it. I'll give it special attention and it will bring forth fruit. If it doesn't, then you can cut it down. But when the command was given and the demand was made for fruit, the nourishment and necessities were provided. The Lord also does this for us. <clears throat> um, we've been given every resource. We've been given uh, blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We've been seated with Christ there. And we've been given all things needful for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Amen. We've also had that good seed that the Lord has planted in us after he made the soil of our heart to be good soil. So we have all that we need to bear fruit from the Lord. This is the Lord's doing. Now, while he gave us good seed, good environment, resources needed, we do enter into this labor. It is our commandment. You be fruitful. You multiply. So we enter in. We are co-laborers together with God. And in this, he's the husbandman. And so I see that we are... Um, apprentice gardeners under his tutelage right now in his field. This is his field. He inspects the plant, which would be us, our lives, our works, our thoughts, motives, deeds, everything. He inspects it, and he may point out an area of concern. He may say, this here, it needs to be pruned. But he'll give you the pruning hook, and he'll say, you remove this branch. This needs to go. Or he might give a little bit more direction, kind of like a mother guiding her child to do a certain task, actually laying his hands upon ours. This is the way to do it. Cut here. Remove this section. Or other times, he might point out an area of a great possibility or something that has potential that he sees that is good, and he'll say, add to your faith in this area or mix this with faith here. And so we will be given everything needful for these fruits to come to maturity. <clears throat> now he does this because it is his vineyard. He's invested himself here in this land and in these plants and in this seed, and he's going to be glorified by much fruit. Jesus said that. My father is glorified.